Seatbelts, everyone! Miss Frizzle here with a wonderful book about bees. We're going to read this book and learn so much about bees. Let's get started. The Magic School Bus Inside a Beehive. What a perfect spring day, said Miss Frizzle, looking out the window. We thought it was perfect too, perfect for playing softball. But the frizz had something else in mind. It's just right for observing honeybees. We had been studying all about different kinds of insects. Now Miss Frizzle said she had found a buzz, a beekeeper who would show us his honey beehives. The beekeeper is visiting his hives today. We'll meet him there, said the frizz. And she swept out the door. As we boarded the old school bus, Miss Frizzle talked and talked about honeybees. They make a delicious food for us to eat, she said. They help many plants survive and they are wonderful examples of social insects. Miss Frizzle drove out into the country and parked the bus next to the hives. The beekeeper was late, so Frizzle took out a picnic basket. Some light lunch refreshments will pass the time while we wait, she said. Sometimes our teacher has good ideas. But just as she opened a jar of honey, her elbow knocked a strange little lever. The honey jar fell and we heard a weird buzzing sound. It was the bus. It was vibrating and getting smaller. So was everything in it, including us. Before we knew it, the bus looked like a little beehive and we looked like real bees. We really did. All out class, buzzed the frizz. One by one, we stepped out the door and looked over at the nearest hive. At the entrance, worker bees were standing guard. Guard bees usually keep out bees from other hives, said the frizz. There's one time when guard bees may let us in a strange bee, said Miss Frizzle. Sometimes a hive may adopt a lost bee, if it is carrying a lot of bee food. All bee food comes from flowers. We'll have to visit flowers and get bee food in order to gain entrance to the hive. Follow that bee, shouted the frizz. We flew after a bee that was headed toward some bright flowers. Observe our bee, children, and do exactly what she does, Miss Frizzle called. The bee stuck her long tube-like tongue in deep into a flower and pumped out nectar. We each did the same with a rubber tube. The bee carries the nectar into a pouch called the honey stomach, Frizzle told us. We carried our nectar in a tiny bottle. Pollen grains rubbed off the flower and stuck onto the bee's fur. With her front and middle legs, she combed off the pollen and packed it into pollen baskets, pouches on her back legs. Then she returned to the hive. We packed our pollen and went along. One by one, we landed at the hive. Miss Frizz sprayed us with a bee pheromone, a chemical that bees make. Now we smelled like bees. Then came the scary part. We held our breath as the guard bees brushed us with their antennae, smelling us. If they fell for our trick, we'd get into the hive. If they didn't, we'd get into big trouble. The guards smelled our bee spray and our bee food. They let us pass. Other workers took our nectar and bustled off with it. Hooray, we're free to explore the hive, sang out Miss Frizzle. The first thing we saw was our bee. She was doing a strange dance. Other bees crowded around her. 
touching her and listening to her. Miss Frizzle said the dance was a language. With her dance, the bee told others which way to go to the flowers she had found. The dance helped the bees find food faster. They did not have to waste time looking for it. They flew off in the direction of the flowers we had visited. Now bees gathered around our bee to get the latest news. We passed the dancing bee and went deeper into the hive. The inside of the hive was covered with beeswax. The bees had shaped the wax into a comb. Thousands of little containers called cells. Every cell was a hexagon, a six-sided shape. The comb was so perfect, we couldn't believe bees had made it. Ma, make comb class, said Miss Frizzle. We did our best, but our cells came out pretty lopsided. Luckily, the bees didn't notice us. They just tore down our cells and built them over again. Other bees were busy with other jobs, such as making honey. We saw the bees changing nectar into honey. First, they added chemicals from glands inside their heads. The chemicals changed the nectar sugars into honey sugars. Then they spread droplets out and fanned them with their wings. This dried up most of the water, leaving the honey thick, sticky, and extra sweet. We fanned too and helped make honey. Miss Frizzle said it was okay to eat some honey, as long as we left plenty for the bees. They need a good supply of honey to help them survive over the winter, she explained. We stopped eating honey long enough to notice a bunch of worker bees nearby. They were tending a larger bee with a long, thin body. She was the queen bee, and the queen walked from cell to cell, as, and she laid a small white egg in each one. The workers touched the queen with their antennae. They licked her with their tongues, and they fed her by mouth-to-mouth -mouth exchange. In some cells, we saw terrible worm-like creatures. These are larvae, baby bees that hatched out of the eggs, said Miss Frizzle. Nurse bees were feeding the babies. The larvae did nothing but eat fast and grow fast. Every time they got too big for their skins, they molted or shed their skins. Then they started eating and growing again. When it is big enough, the larva stops eating, said the frizz. It spins a silk cocoon around itself. Now it is called a pupa. The nurse bees put a wax on top of the cell. Inside the pupa doesn't eat or grow bigger. It changes into an adult bee. This is called metamorphosis. When the pupae have finished changing into adult bees, they chew their way out of their cells, continued Miss Frizzle. We never saw new worker bees emerging. They let the air dry them off and started working right away. Meanwhile, we heard exciting buzzing. What was happening? The queen was leaving the hive and she was taking almost half the workers with her. They flew away in a thick swarm. What would become of the hive now? Miss Frizzle led the way to the queen cells. Two new queens emerged at the same time. After they had dried out, they had a terrible fight. One queen stung the other queen to death. Then she killed the other queen pupae in their cells. Now she was the new queen. Oh, amazing. The worker bees pushed the new queen out of the hive. Miss Frizzle said she was going on a nuptial flight, a flight to mate with drones. After the new queen left, we heard heavy footsteps. It was a bear trying to steal the honey and the bee larvae. 
The workers flew out and tried to sting the bear, but its thick fur protected its body. We flew out and dived at the bear, but it kept coming at the hive. We have to use strategy, class, called the frizz. We'll lure the bear away. Miss Frizzle made a beeline for the beehive bus and we followed. The jar of honey that had spilled before was still on the floor. The bear smelled the honey and came after us. Miss Frizzle, we yelled, do something. She stepped on the gas and the bus lurched forward. As we rounded a corner, the honey jar rolled out of the bus door. As the jar fell, it returned to its normal size. The bear started eating honey and forgot all about us. Miss Frizzle reached for a joystick on the dashboard. To our relief, the bus lifted off. It wasn't a beehive bus anymore, it was a bee bus. Down below, we saw the new queen returning home from her nuptial flight. We returned home from our flight too. The instant its six feet touched the ground in the school parking lot, the bee bus changed. It was a full-size bus again. We were human kids again. And back in the classroom, we thought of the, per of the perfect project to end the day. Baking honey buns, of course. Look at Miss Frizzle. Class, if you like learning about bees, then make sure to check out more books about bees. Have a great day.